the term capital investment refers to the investment refers to the investment made in the acquisition made in the acquisition refers to the investment made in the acquisition of capital assets of capital assets such as of capital assets such as land plants buildings etc etc land plant buildings etc land plant buildings etc most of them the capital investment is eventually reflected the capital investment the capital investment is eventually reflected the capital investment is eventually reflected is eventually reflected reflected in the net should be in the gross not net in the gross on stroke net block right gross stroke net block in the gross stroke net block in the gross stroke net block in the gross stroke net block comma most rep mostly as part of the property plant and equipment mostly mostly as part of the property plant and equipment you put in brackets uh, p p and e p p and e property plant and equipment property plant and equipment so it's PP and E PP and E it's PP and E's property plant and equipment those are what are those fixed assets so that which is captured which is captured as a separate line as a separate line which is captured as a separate line which is captured as a separate line in the balance sheet which is captured as a separate line in the balance sheet full stop the formula for capital investment the formula for capital investment formula for capital investment can be expressed as an aggregate the formula for capital investment can be expressed as an aggregate as an aggregate as an aggregate yes aggregate as an aggregate be expressed as an aggregate as an aggregate of net increase in the value of the net increase in the value of the net increase in the value of gross block of gross block of gross block and depreciation charged and depreciation charged and depreciation charged for the period and the depreciation charged for the period full stop for the, for the depreciation charged for the period for the period yes
mathematically it is presented as it is represented as capital investment is equal to uh, net increase in gross block net increase in gross block plus depreciation expense plus depreciation expense now let me have it from you uh, we're talking of um, we are talking of uh, capital investment as the acquisition of assets particularly we are looking at fixed assets from your background what's the behavior of fixed assets in as far as accounting treatment is concerned an idea how we treat uh, fixed assets, the PPEs, that's property, plant, and equipment. How do we treat them? Any idea? Or anything? Yes, ma'am? Would you like to start? They always add value. Uh -huh. Anyone who agrees with that? Fix assets. I feel like she has said the opposite. Deceiver. Any idea? So fix assets, uh, they always what? Lose value. And they do lose value through what? Through their usage. Just as you're using new desks, right? Are these new? What does think about it? And then I was at Zulu, not all. Oh, new development, anyway. Maria? Is that Zulu? So it's like Mongova Silva? <laughs> this is when they are done as one be invested. Maria? Could you connect in a minute? Alright, so what do I say there is when they fix assets, they do lose value due to their usage. And that loss we call it depreciation. We have heard of depreciation before. All right. So when talk of depreciation, this is the loss in value of the assets due, due to their usage. So whenever you see assets in the balance sheet, whenever you see the assets being reported, definitely that means the assets have been reported net of what? The depreciation. So definitely for us to understand when talk of the value of the asset or whatever we record in the asset, the assets are recorded on the cost based on the cost that they are uh, acquired into the business. So you look at the amount that you spent, the amount that you spent is the very same amount that you report in the uh, balance sheet. So a good example, let's take over the years, you see that in the balance sheet there you have some assets and upon calculating you have the total figure or oh, they will always give you say total asset total fixed assets this is the amount that means the amount that you see in the balance sheet there is net of what depreciation depreciation has not been included there so for you to know how much exactly you spent in acquiring those assets that means you need to add back what the depreciation that you charged i know says vega
पाँच बार आप ऐसे Yes, uh, I know this is very. How? How is Friday? Yes, sister. What's your name? Okay. Sole. Okay. So, uh, Claudia. 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 How do you write your name? Claudia. Claudia. Have you heard of that name? Yes. Claudia. It's my first time. It's my first time to hear that. Okay. Uh, I'm saying when to drunk in a carriage or young and job did out. Nina would him. Tagambaza capital investment. Did the capital investment? Nigukula, my asset, my fixed asset. Then we my fixed asset. I'm going to report my balance sheet. Then we have more balance sheet. My fixed assets. I'm going to report muda chosira boya depreciation. Then we have the gamale my asset my balance sheet. My asset is I'm a member of the company. We need to get good data. That's the value. Then we call it Mogwisa Shiro Masses. Mavido Waja, Mamabanga report. Need Masses, I jump a card, I lose a yan, value. You may be known in the depreciation. Then Masses, I jet him a card, I have a report in balance sheet, did I just some more depreciation. Then we defeat the zero body, Ulendo Masses, that down is a Masses, how much? This is not okay. Deny I'm the value of the assets. The value, uh, asset, my value, I mean, assets, the last value I've reported, then I'm going to add back the position I made in the USA so that the zero, the lama, the zero, 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 Okay, let, let me try to give you an example. Then from the example, otherwise you should be able to learn something. All right, so let's have this. Example one. You write example one. So, you write. Let's take the example of a company and compute its capital investment. Let's take the example of a company and compute its investment, uh, its capital investment in twenty, in twenty eighteen, on the basis of the following. Okay, I'm saying let's take the example of a company and compute its capital investment and compute its capital investment. And compute its capital investment in 2018 on the basis of the following information. On the basis of the following information, we are there. Right? You write depreciation expense, depreciation expense, eight thousand. Depreciation expense, 8,000. We're there. You put in bracket income statement. Income statement. Income statement. And uh, gross block at the start of the year. Gross block. At the start of the year, gross block at the start of the year, of 
45,000 or 45,000 or 45,000 or 45,000 you put in brackets balance sheet balance sheet balance sheet you're there right Common. gross block at the end of the year 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 of 50,000 you put uh, in bracket balance sheet So in short there, that means we have been given assets, so all our tasks will be, say, with the information provided, how much assets we are added. So if we are able to know how much was spent to buy extra assets, then that amount is the amount for what? Capital investment. Are we together? Okay, let's us uh, rate, take the example of a company and compute its capital investment in 2018 so on the basis of the following information depreciation expense 8,000 in bracket income statement. Gross block at the start of the year for the 5,000. Gross block at the start of the year for the 5,000. We there, right? Balance sheet. Gross block at the end of the year, 50,000. Balance sheet in bracket there. So, how we have the formula on top there, say how do we, how based we need to compute capital investment. Have you followed everything? All right. So I was saying, for you to know the amount of capital investment, you just have to calculate what has been the addition of assets made over the year. So we should be able to know how much assets we are having at the start or at the beginning of the year, and how much assets we have at the end that would help us understand if there have been any uh, difference or if it has been any and uh, have been any addition to the amount of assets that the company is having so with the formula that is there do you guess anything anything that you guess Tirimoti. Anyone who has, who can put probably even in the chair the way you or she has understood this. I feel like this is going to be They didn't talk about These are just simple stuff. Not even tough as probably we might see. A little bit, a little bit. And now the, in the balance sheet, assets are recorded at what? Net of their? Net of their depreciation. They will be they're recorded in the balance sheet without their depreciation. Without. Sorry? Without. without. Depreciation is an expense. Where it finds itself, 
income statement. You have done accounting before, except few. The only person that I'm 100% sure that did accounting is her. Those two are very good. This one I failed. This one only my assets as you go by. That difference in terms of an increment, the old Indrama's benefit now will be my asset earner. And that amount is what we are calling what? Capital investment. Are you getting it? Yes, that, what have you understood now? So, it's like you said, um, at the first of the year, we record all the, the total value of the asset that we have mm -hmm. and start the business. Mm -hmm. And as it's coming to an end, mm -hmm. uh, like you said, in the balance sheet, we don't include the depreciation mm -hmm. because it's an expense. Mm -hmm. So, we calculate the, think, the total value of assets at the end of the year and the difference mm -hmm. or the amount that has been added to the, the, what, to the total value of assets in the first year. Mm -hmm. When we do that, that's like the amount that we invest in the capital investment. Exactly. So if you had to look at that problem, how do you think you could get it? How much were assets recorded at the beginning of the year? 45,000. How much assets were there at the end of the year? 50, so how much assets have we bought over that 2018? I'll say our current investment is 5,000. 5,000? Yes. Why are, we, why, why are we coming up with that? So the capital investment is five thousand. Uh huh. It's five thousand. Mm -hmm. That's all. So we are able to see, say, mass is at they have jumped from forty-five to fifty. And in the uh, our assets in the balance sheet, they are recorded without what? Including depreciation. They would fail to number the assets for the 5,000. Out of the 45,000 assets that we had, we uh, added other chunk of assets. And that just have depreciation. Basically, the assets as now they are what? 50. And then we need to find the difference between the gross block, how much we have increased, and that amount was also reduced by the depreciation expense that we took off. The inc net increase in gross block plus what? Depreciation expense. We have total capital investment. Zoom figure, guys. All right, so what we have there? The we have a solution, so we write solution, and if you want the solution, definitely, that's the formula. So what we need is net increase, net increase in, net increase in uh, gross block. So net increase in gross block, we have what? 45 minus what? I mean 50 minus 45. So we have 50,000 less 45,000, which gives you a 5,000. So in terms of the assets that we are recorded in the balance sheet, this is the job. But out of this, we have taken off depreciation because assets they need to show the real value. And the real value as on the date it was reported, 50 was the real value of what? The assets that were there. But at the beginning they were only 45. So we need to add back depreciation. So you have a capital investment. So capital investment 
this five thousand that's a net increase in gross block five thousand plus depreciation expense which is eight thousand and what you get should be thirteen thousand So do this for me. So you write a uh, compute capital investment, compute capital investment. based on the following information based on the following information accumulated depreciation and amortization accumulated depreciation and amortization amortization yes amortization you get a return accounting? Why were you given this course? <laughs> I should just spare it, right? Zinazo. <laughs> okay. That is AMRTI. Yes. AMRTI Amota Z A T I O N Have you know that way before? Amortization. It's called, it's, uh, it's the same as you do of depreciation, but applied in a different way. You have good amortization. Oh my god. Have we heard of intangible assets? Intangible assets? Yes. Yes. What have we got there? What are they saying? It says amortization refers to the expense in the acquisition cost minus the reason to value of intangible assets in a systematic manner over the estimated business in order to lives so as to refer to their consumption expiry. Okay, it's okay. Right. What's in, uh, what, what are intangible assets? What are intangible assets? Sorry? Intangible assets. Have you know this? Brother, which class were we together last time? Oh. Have we of these intangible assets? Ah, no, no, no. No, I'm saying, what have you heard? Have you read of these things? No, I think they are assets that are Like what? They are not Exactly. Examples? Copyrights. Copyrights, exactly. Licenses. Licenses. Uh huh. Aha, I think. Aha, uh -huh, we 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 didn't about this, huh? Why 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 are we given this course? <laughs> eh? So? Lady. Who should have a foundation? You remember I said 
this course we work on the job that has been done by who? An accountant, right? So if you don't know the job that an accountant does, it will be a bit creepy, no? Yes, ma'am. Tingo <laughs> bidi <laughs> so, my tangible assets are just as uh, Deshiva said, we look at those assets that can be seen patents, copyrights, goodwill, all those kind of stuff. So, we may not spend much time on that. Yes. <laughs> they, they are referring to the license that we see. So when you say license, in this case we talk of patents that comes with uh, an invention. If you have invented something or you have come up with something new that uh, you can make business out of it, you protect that. So you get registered and have a license. We call that a patent, right? So it's like you know, nobody should be making uh, an earning or a living out of what you have discovered. Copyrights. Have you heard of Kosoma, something like that? Yeah. Uh, if one do imba, ngadimaru sani imbo ina sa sa imbe so siyonjo. So your license, right? That's what we are looking at. That's what we are referring at. Are we there? Even those authors, you know authors, right? They also protect their work so that no one should be making use of, the, of such kind of stuff. Panji, you're getting it? Yes. So those are patent rights. Goodwill, all those kind of stuff. So when a um, fixed asset, we do depreciate. That's the lose value through depreciation. Intangible assets, we amortize. They lose value through, or in what we call amortization. No, they have to. Give us a good example. Sole? Buildings do lose value. They are fixed assets. Look at this building. Is this building the same as it was? The time it was constructed? Land does not lose value. This building? Uh huh. If they are not to sell it today, it will cost more. Uh huh. <laughs> devaluation. The, va the price might be high because of devaluation, but as, as the building, we may find that the value it had, it's not the same. You see, it has, uh, it, it's reeking or what, what, all those kind of stuff. When we talk of land, land in accounting, we say it does not lose value. Because what we're looking at is, if you look at where these buildings are sitting, area, it was just chichiri, right? So you had to create, and by creating it, bringing all this, you are improving the land. Oh my God. <laughs> Do you come? Huh? Sorry? Mugumba? All right, so such kind of stuff. Okay? To the months. All right. So I'll say accumulate. When say to accumulate means what? To accumulate. To gather, to add up. Just coming in, right? So I was saying, accumulated depreciation and amortization at the start of 2018. At the start of 2018 was 41,293,000. 41,293,000. Copyright. 
comma forty one million two hundred and ninety three thousand comma accumulated depreciation and amortization at the end of twenty eighteen at the end of twenty eighteen yes. accumulated depreciation and amortization at the start of 2080, 41,293,000. I think you should be saying to me now how you write the figure. It's 41,293,000. This way. Let's write that figure, right? Finance managers, what is figure and drama? Some with you did in the branch. All right, so I'll say after that figure, I said, comma, accumulated depreciation and amortization at the end of 2018. At the end of 2018. At the end of 2018 at the end of 2018 at the end of 2018 Sorry? Yes, the same as I said we are made of Accumulated depreciation and amortization at the end of 2018 You are made of the start Professor Sophie Gada for the nine million ninety nine thousand for the nine million for the nine million and ninety nine thousand. Do you know how to write that? <laughs> <laughs> Anyone who has written that figure? Anyone who has written that figure? Who has written? Yes. <coughs> For the nine million and ninety-nine thousand. Yes. Yes. Plus, Marimo. Punch, Marimo. So it's this figure. We said for the for the nine, right? Million ninety-nine thousand. What's up, Jesus? You like it? Yes. 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 Why like it? Not a bit too much. Enough that's why we hate it. All right. So I say. 99, I mean for the 9 million, nine, uh, for the 9 million, 99,000, full stop. You're there? Mm -hmm. Net PPE, net PPE, net PPE, net PPE at the start of 2018, at the start of 2018, was thirty three million seven hundred and eighty three thousand for the thirty three million eight hundred and I mean seven hundred eighty three thousand with the seven hundred and eighty three thousand with the right comma Net PPE at the end of 2018 41,304,000 for the 1,304,000 for the 1,304,000 for the 1,304,000 Sorry? Yes, thirty three million three hundred and four thousand. 
No. Thirty three million. Three hundred and four thousand. Wait, wait, wait. I said, oh, I'm being right. Net PPE uh, at the start of what? Ah, uh, yeah, should be 33. Seven hundred and eighty-three. <laughs> it's okay. We are there, right? Then next PPE at the end of twenty eighteen. Forty-one million three hundred and four thousand. Compute capital investment. Can we do that? Compute capital investment. We're done.
Esse próximo. Um outro lá. Uma vez ali. Exato. Vamos para o outro topic. Mal, você ouviu o mesmo? Sim. Tudo bem. Now, all right. Let's go to. Capital investment appraisal. 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 Spending for appraisal. What's the spending? A W P R A I S A N A. What is to appraise? What is to appraise? Check. Check. Mm -hmm. Then uh, you balance for what? Yeah, I would like to understand. Let's say to appraise is to balance. You balance. What is it that you have to balance? Mom, at work, well, there is a pra appraisal, right? We create appraisal, something like that. Are we ready of it? Yeah, that's a bit Ah. This is a phrase we used to ask for. Any guess? Uh -huh. So, when talk of, uh, we have looked at uh, capital investment as the acquisition of what? Assets. So, when we talk of uh, capital investment appraisal, for what we'll be looking at is the same. We'll try to understand the relevance of why should we have such capital investment. So in this case, what we'll be looking at is, let's take we'd like to go for a project, and there are a number of projects. In this, and in this case, we are looking at um, a mutually exclusive what? projects. What are mutually exclusive projects? Mutually exclusive projects. What are they? Any guess? Mm -hmm. They what? I don't get it. Big projects. Big projects. Mutually exclusive. Mutually exclusive projects. What are they? Mutually exclusive projects. Any case? Needs more capital. More assets. Yes, brother, then. Any idea? Uh, have we done probabilities? There is that term in probability. Mutual exclusive, all those kind of stuff. Okay, anyway, we talk of mutual exclusive projects. We are looking at those projects that cannot be done concurrently. We need to do one project at a time. Mutual exclusive projects. They cannot be done at the very same time. We need to choose one. Let's, let's try to use these weights. Uh, we need to go dependent projects. 
and independent projects. How do you differentiate these projects? Dependent projects and independent. Have you heard of these terms before? Yes. What do they mean? That's for dependent. It doesn't impact on the other. Exactly. So let's have this. You write um, capital investment appraisal. Capital investment appraisal. Also known as capital budgeting. Also known as capital budgeting. Uh, can I make this call? So I'll say capital investment appraisal, also known as capital budgeting, is primary 
a planning process is primary a planning process is primary a planning process yes is primary a planning process is primary a planning process planning process which facilitates the determination 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 yeah there which facilitates the determination of concerned firms investment determination of concerned firms investment concerned firms investment firm f i r m Maria Kodoira whatsoever is FIMS investment, both long term and short term. Full stop. Capital investment appraisal factors. Capital investment appraisal factors. Yes. Capital investment appraisal factors are selected. Capital investment fact capital investment appraisal factors capital investment appraisal factors are selected based on the priorities of stakeholders based on the priorities of stakeholders based on priorities of stakeholders based on priorities of stakeholders and decision makers and decision makers with that right this available this available wide criteria selection 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 of capital investment appraisal of capital investment appraisal or budgeting 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 is based upon long-term growth 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 when compared to short term profits all right so here what we'll be looking at is as i said uh in this case we are looking at investments or projects that are what? mutually exclusive in that we may not be able to do the investments at once we need to do these are uh, patchwork, patchwork so what we're looking at is that among the investment that might be at the disposal of the company the company have to select what just a single project so we'll be able to sit down and say what should we do let me ask you uh in just normal life let's take you have two opportunities there that you can grab them and you are required to grab only just a single what will you do what would be the basis for you to choose one and leave the other take any situation of your choice 
benefits. The benefits, right? Yes. So definitely, they might both be benefiting you, but the one that benefits you a lot is the one that they are taking. So in this case, having several opportunities, we just have to select a single opportunity. So under capital uh, budgeting or investment appraisal, we have several techniques that we follow. And using those techniques, uh, we'll be able to select a single choice. So light capital investment appraisal techniques, capital investment appraisal techniques, capital investment appraisal techniques, we there, right? So you write, or you may also write in bracket, capital budget, uh, budgeting appraisal. Capital budgeting appraisal. So you write, the capital investment appraisal techniques, the capital, the capital investment appraisal techniques used to measure capital investment, used to measure capital investment used to measure to measure capital investment appraisal used i think the writing there is not correct the capital investment appraisal techniques used to measure capital investment used to measure capital investment of a project including including let me rest there, then we'll start discussing one by one. That's where mathematics is now, right? What yeah? But how best can I be doing this quiz one adaption? I don't know. I don't think it is capturing what I'm doing. So we start with net present value. Net present value second we have uh, accounting rate of return accounting rate of return these are called in term short terms ARR NPV net present value then we also have internal rate of return. Internal rate of return. I R R. Then we have the third one. And the third one, we do have profitability index. Oh yes, fourth one. Profitability. That is not a Okay. Then we have payback period. So in this case what we'll be looking at is to say how best we can choose uh, how best we can choose the project using those following uh, techniques. Any technique that we have heard before? All that we are familiar with. Any technique among the presented ones that uh, you know or you are here? I have heard of the internal rate of return. I believe we made a couple of calculations. I don't remember the details in your presentation. I don't remember. This is. Yes, ma'am. You, you know anything? 
So in the in the in the in the two. Bang. And the match on the left here. See you where we do. Sorry. So you have never, but you are waiting for you to start sobbing, huh? Mm -hmm. So sobbing is calm. She will also have figure. So we start with the net present value. Uh, I will explain first, but later on we start writing. Match present value. I should start my explanation by giving a question. Have you heard of time value of money? Time value of money. Have we heard of that? Uh -huh. This is there. Not all. Time value of money. Time value of money time value of money depreciate uh -huh. uh -huh. for example this year um, I'm giving an example. This year, a hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. This example, mm -hmm. they get you like uh, two chickens. Mm -hmm. Next year, same time, hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. cost you like in one chicken. Mm -hmm. you get so many. So you are talking about the same thing, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. You see, value of money. Yes, brother. Is it going to be the same as the other one? Then I'm going to go back to the zone. I'm going to go back to the zone. Do you guys cheat during the exam? I've never been here when you pass the exam. Do you cheat during the exam? Not you, who are here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 so when you say time value of money, money to lose value as time comes, right? Mm -hmm. That's why we hear most of the time they say to, uh, a dollar today is worth more a dollar tomorrow. Likewise, a quarter today is worth more than a quarter tomorrow. See you. Yes. So when we talk of um, net present value, what we look at is we try to understand the future cash flows in terms of their present value. That is to say, if you are doing an investment today, let's take your, let's take your investing ten thousand today, and you are told say after a week this ten thousand would probably give you what fifteen k, right? So the person will be, this is the present cash, right? Yes. This is the future cash. So we should be able to understand this future cash into its present value. And that is to say, is uh, 15,000 that has to be earned after a week in terms of its value equivalent to the 10,000 we're having today. So if yes, we will be able to carry on with the project. But remember, we said, our focus is to make sure that whatever we're doing, we are bringing value to the company. So definitely, at the end of time, we should be able to see if there is what? Profit of what we're doing. So we'll be saying, and uh, Net present value, we try to equate or to match the amount we're investing today, which we shall term it as initial capital outlay to the cash flows that will be coming in the future. So we'll be able to sum up all those future cash flows and be able to take off from the present one. I, I mean, 
we serve all the future cash flows and take off the net uh, cash outfit. So the question would be, if let's take the future cash flows are more than the uh, the net, I mean the cash out trade or the capital out trade, then definitely we have a situation where net present value, uh, net present value being what greater than what, right? A great example. Let's take. Uh, after some time, we have invested ten thousand. Then in the future, we get uh, thirteen, right? This is three, I mean fifty minus ten. You have five. Five, which is greater than one. So if the future cash flows are less than the initial capital outlay, then that means we have a net present value of what less than one. Then we may also have a situation where the future cash flows and the present cash outlay they are just the same. So you have net present value equal to what to zero. So here, what we do, we try to use what we call the discounting factor. And uh, those who came up with these uh, techniques, they said by using the discounting factor, we try to incorporate uh, what we call the impact that the risk would have in the the risk would have in the what uh, the risk would have uh, in the project or the assets that you are invested in. So, when we have to make a decision, because what we are looking is, we are saying capital investment appraisal, our focus is to select a project, right? Whether the project should be picked or the project should not be picked. Do you want know mm -hmm. So, in this case, that means at the end of time, we will have a situation where the net present value uh, gives us these outcomes. So if the net present value gives us these outcomes, if the net present value is greater than one, that means we need to select what? The project. Because the project is giving a reward or is giving a value to the business. Whereas if the net present value is less than one, that means there is no profitability in the business and we reject the project. Two points here. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And when the net present value is zero, that means the company becomes what? Undecided. Because in this case, that means the company neither does it make a profit nor does it make what? A loss. So it's 50 50. So the question would be should we carry on on this project or not? So some companies would go say this, carry on, on the project probably with hope of better tomorrow, or others would leave it. So that's why I say when the net present value is zero, the company becomes undecidable. All right, let's write this on that. You say the net present value is the difference between the present value. The net present value is the difference. Maybe in the Pangamaya, any person? Job persons? All right. So I'll say the net present value. Sir, yep. Um, you said that you give us three Mm. One that is than one, mm -hmm. one that is less than one, mm -hmm. and there is a zero. Mm -hmm. But isn't it a zero instead of one? Anyone who would answer her? Is a zero, not a less than one. <laughs> okay. Here, uh, let me try to give uh, a very remote example, right? Let's take you have a business, right? You have put, uh, let's take 100,000. And upon the completion of your business, you have made 100,000 again. Have you made a loss? Have you made a gain? Should you continue with that business? It's 
So that's what we so that what we meant. Whereas you compare the others, let's take you you put a uh, hundred thousand and you have made hundred and fifty. It's profitable, right? You put hundred thousand and you come up with seventy. It's a loss, right? No need to do that. All right. So let's have this. I'll say the difference is the difference between the present value of the cash inflows in the cash inflows in the present value of the cash outflows the difference between the present value of cash inflows and the present value of the cash outflows over a period of time 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 with there right first of all net present value is used in capital budgeting net present value is used in capital budgeting is used in capital budgeting and investment planning Eight, We are there, right? So I'm saying net present value is used when I say net present value can be even shortening it just NPV. NPV is used in capital budgeting and investment planning to analyze the profitability of a project investment. To analyze the profitability of the project investment, to analyze the profitability of the project investment or project just like that or project with it uh, to analyze i'll say net present value in capital budgeting or investment planning is uh in planning should be net present value is used in capital budgeting and investment planning to analyze the profitability of a project of a project should be of a projected investment or a project of a projected investment or a project with that right formula for net present value all right calculating net present value calculating net present value so you write net present value is a method 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 used to determine the current value 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 
he used to determine the current value of all future cash flows of all future cash flows generated by a project generated by a project generated by a project generated by a project comma including the initial investment full stop yeah there right so what we do if you look at there what we do is the formula is net present value is it to you talk of sum of sum of i one they say cash flows cash flows over one plus r r n this initial investment this initial investment so others would say net present net present value is it cash flow one over one plus r power n should be one plus cash flow two over one plus r power two plus as cash flow cash flow n over one plus r to the power n minus initial investment do you want to say on the first one what is that one do the this one? Yes. It's an I. We are there, right? Select. Alright. So in our next meeting, we'll pick it from that end. So for today, we end here. Unless there's a question or questions.
Do you have questions? All right, thank you.